Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, thank you all for joining us. My name is Jill Cassell. For those of you who don't recognize me from prior webinars, I am the director of GLS here at Columbia Law School, and I am thrilled to introduce you to five of our fabulous LLMs from um, this year's class, the LLM class of 2020. Um, they have ex uh, very graciously agreed to speak to you about what it's like to be an LLM student here at Columbia. Um, when we decided to do this webinar series for our admitted students, one of the biggest questions that we received was, what is it really like to be a student here? Um, and so um, we have Lucas from Brazil, Faye from China, Jake from the UK, Ananya from India, and Teresa from Italy. So you're going to hear my voice stepping off the camera, and I'm going to leave it with um, all of them. This is going to be a conversation. We have Allison from GLS will be a voice in the background, too. You can, as in prior webinars, ask questions online if something's not addressed. Um, but I'm going to leave it up to our fabulous students, as I said. Um, to talk to you um, and have a conversation with each other about what this year is all about. Okay, so I'm going to step aside. And if you all could start, um, you can start with whomever, maybe we start with Lucas. Um, tell us who you are, where you're from, what you were doing a little bit before um, you came here, and why you chose to come to Colombia. Okay, well, hello everyone wherever you are in the world. Um, my name is Lucas, I'm from Brazil. I used to practice law as, a, uh, as an attorney in Brazil before coming, um, before moving abroad. Actually, um, in my second year of master's, I started, uh, I was in UK before, then I decided to come to Colombia much because of uh, the, reputation of the school and being in New York. I think these these were like my prim primary goals um, for for Colombia. And yeah, to start with, I, I guess that's it. Let's hear from our friends. Uh, so my name is Jake. I'm from the UK. I, I was practicing for a few years as a barrister beforehand. I wanted to come and study and it was one of those things that I'd always wanted to do. Um, I can say Colombia really has lived up to expectations. It's very strange being in this position because it doesn't seem that long ago. I think we'd all agree it's, it's gone so quickly. But um, we've all had very different experiences and you can really make a lot of what you want it to be. And Jake is one of our human rights fellows here this year too. So he's Hi, I'm Ananya. I'm from India, New Delhi. Uh, I was a corp I am a corporate lawyer and I practiced M&A and private equity for about three years before I got to Colombia. Uh, one of the big reasons that I wanted to study in Colombia, my reason is very similar to Jake's, uh, is that I've always wanted to study further. And for me, Colombia sort of integrates very seamlessly, A, being able to, giving you exposure of two different kinds. One is academic and in that sense, it's really unparalleled being here and interacting with professors who are here who are at the top of their game and you name the area and their experts in those fields and the other part of it really for me was the personal growth aspect which i think has been phenomenal because i can now safely say i have a friend from i think every country in the world and sure. all my future holidays are taken care of <laughs> so never paying for hotels again <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Teresa. I'm from Milan, Italy. I've been practicing law for four years um, as a banking and finance attorney. And then I decided that, let's say, I wanted to move forward to, you know, like take the next step, go to the next level. And well, Colombia, I mean, was <laughs> the, was the best choice because, um, well, why did I choose? Did I choose Colombia? Was because I wanted the best. I want the best, and here is best law school I think in one of the most amazing cities so I really wanted you know to get to the top and when I got admitted uh yeah I was I was super excited and I think that here I could really get uh, go, get what I wanted and you know move to the next level as I wanted hey everyone my name is Faye I'm from uh, Beijing China so uh, before attending Columbia I was a corporate lawyer 
in China for uh, about six years. And now uh, I'm here. I'm really happy about making this decision because before coming here, I was sort of deciding between, you know, studying in the on the West Coast or versus East Coast. But because I'm always a like a big city kind of guy, so I really think uh, I want to study in a big city. And New York City has so much to offer. Also, Columbia is the best law school I got. I'm really into. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason why I'm not coming here. So uh, yeah, here I am. Can any of you mention like a single defining moment or something that about the LLM year that's really struck you so far? Um, does anyone have an idea or something that stuck out, stood out for you so far? I'm going to talk about my birthday again. So <laughs> I need to talk about that. So yeah, it started in August. Uh, we were like in the second uh, second uh, week of, of classes. And I mean, we didn't know each other. We was like kind of like getting integrated right right uh, after orientation week, and it was my birthday. I was so lucky. I, I it was a Friday. I don't know what happened in that day. We had a big <laughs> WhatsApp group, but I, I received like more than one hundred and fifty happy birthday messages, and that made really made my day. It was the best birthday <laughs> after uh, ever. So it was right in the beginning, and for me, it was like. It was a, a very good sign that it would be an amazing, an amazing year, and it has been living up to the expectation so far. If if I could pitch in, yeah, I think what really stands out for me about Colombia is that there is something for everybody here, and so I came in as a corporate lawyer, but I'm doing a seminar on Russia and the international order, which conceivably wouldn't really think of a corporate lawyer doing. But I felt like it was a really interesting thing to do. And I can imagine it's true for everybody, whether they just wanted to pursue something to try out a new area of law or uh, keep in touch with their existing interests and passions. I've been able to dance both my semesters in Colombia. I love dancing. I'm performing in April. And I feel like this, if you're willing to keep an open mind and really explore all the opportunities Colombia has to offer, you will be tired, <laughs> but it'll be worth it. Um, I'd, I'd also say one of the things that I found was I had a real sense of some of the things that I wanted to explore and study, but it's those things that you just kind of happen upon and they can be completely life-changing for you. I, I, I don't say this lightly, but some of the classes that I've taken have really changed the way that I think about issues and ideas. And it, it, part of it is the American way of teaching. But part of it is you do have these professors, you know, they write the book on the area, but then they're interested in what you have to say and they challenge and you from that. And from there, it develops into something. And, you know, it opens up doors that probably didn't know existed beforehand. Well, if I have to think about something that stood out for me in this LLM so far, uh, for sure is one of one of the courses I, I took in the first semester in the fall term. It was corporation course with Professor <coughs> Talley. I, I suggest take that course to all of you but up to you and it was really amazing because every single day I went to class uh, even though it was 8 30 in the morning that's why it maybe <laughs> probably it could have been you know like I could have I, I mean, was think double class <laughs> yeah yeah think double maybe before too many but no I'm kidding it was really the most amazing experience I, I felt blessed every single class every single lecture I've been Taking with that professor, really, I, I felt honored every 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 class because uh, it's it's amazing. It's is a professor who made really made me really love the, the subject matter, and yeah, I, I I remember that every 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 morning getting into class, even though it was eight thirty, <laughs> I felt honored and blessed to be there, to be so lucky to hear that professor lecturing, making jokes, and you know, right. making you love the subject the subject matter. I, Eight thirty in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. stress. <on> the <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was kind of tough, but was super good. And also, like a general impression that I have is a lot of the professor here are actually very. Um, they encourage students to speak up in class, and also I think a lot of people who are not coming from a common law jurisdiction, like this whole sort of American way of law teaching, is really, really rewarding, and also it helps you to really think about the cases and also when you are in class you know i feel like a lot of classes are very intellectually intriguing and you are you, you 
sometimes you feel like, oh, this Socratic method is kind of intimidating, but you know, this is a long process. You have this one year to sort of train yourself to be sort of a little, you know, like challenge. They're not going to push you, but sometimes you're going to be challenged, but you have to learn how to put it on the spot and willing to, um, you're going to like, be surprised about like how much potential you have. Especially if you haven't True. done readings. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <that's laughs> thinking on the spot. Yeah. Well, in my opinion. Okay, so talk about that a little bit. Um, what, one of the big questions that we got from all of you and that we're getting from students now is, what is the workload really like? How am I going to figure out my classes? How does this all come together? I think I know exactly what I want to do, but what if that changes? How do you put it all together, and how much work really is it while you're here? Um, can you can you quantify that for them, or help them figure out what it's like? Who I wants to start? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think I have a couple of thoughts on this. I think uh, it helps to have a general idea of it helps to have a general idea of the kinds of subjects you want to study and the areas of study you want to explore, but also have an open mind because you, like Jake said, you might chance upon something that really changes the way you look at a particular field of study. In terms of how much of a workload it is, there's a lot of flexibility in how you want to design your schedule, which is, I think, another one of Columbia's strengths. Uh, it For me, it was a little difficult to get back into studying mode, and I had thought it would be a breeze because I had 100-hour weekends and 100-hour work weeks at home, but it was a little bit difficult to get back and start approaching life through the lens of a student. I thought that was a very interesting transition. And I remember speaking to friends about how we fell asleep on our desks trying to study cases. And, <laughs> and that happened to somebody I know. She woke up the next morning at her desk. Uh, but uh, I think there's also, I think it helps to introspect and also understand what you want to gain from your time in New York, because it really is a phenomenal city. And the kind of growth you experience from just being around the city, really, there's no substitute for it. So when you put the two together, it can be fairly overwhelming. There's always a lot of stuff going on at Columbia. There's countless things going on in New York. But it's also good to remind yourself that it's okay to take a breather, stay in, just watch Netflix, go to sleep on time, and then start the next day afresh because it can be a lot to take in. But you have the flexibility to take in as much as you want, which I think is a great thing. I would say as well, you have an opportunity, and I think it's the first week you pick your courses, and you have an opportunity to sit in on other courses that can be really useful and eye-opening. But then on top of that, it's not just the actual subjects that you study. So there's a lunchtime talk, I'd say pretty much every day, there's, yeah. there's quite often they conflict because there's so many interesting ones that you want to go to. Then you go and you can speak to the professors about certain things that they are writing or studying or you're looking at. Then on top of that, additional speakers have it's just, and then in, in that way, I think as you were saying, you, you kind of create your own year. Um, and it's really interesting to see where you, what you wanted at the outset to where you are when you're out in our position and kind of where you're ending up. Yeah, and also like uh, in terms of workload, I feel like, um, especially for a lot of people who want to take the bar exam after this LM, I would suggest that you could actually front load those kind of required courses yeah. in the first semester so that you have much more flexibility in the second semester. Because I feel like, my schedule, like I'm taking all of the like professional responsibility, um, PR, of <laughs> the, what does professional responsibility, um, <laughs> evidence and corporations. Like these are the courses that I really need to sit for the bar. And now in this semester, I'm taking all of the like corporate related courses and business related courses I want to take. Um, and, and also I feel like the workload in this semester is much more um, manageable. I would say the first semester is also manageable, but like those kind of courses normally require lots of readings and you should really prepare for the class, yeah. Have any of you done um, something different, like been a research assistant or worked for one of our centers or been on a journal or taken an experiential class, like an externship or a clinic or something like that, and can you speak about that experience? Well, um, I've not been a research assistant, but like, well, speaking about courses, first semester I met all the requirements for the bar, so I took only lectures in this semester. I'm having more fun, let's say. Final <laughs> sounds sound fun to you, but I'm taking all the finance course related. 
uh, finance related courses, sorry. And uh, yeah, I, I'm having fun, a lot of fun this semester because I'm really taking and doing what, what I like, what I love. But for example, I'm noticing the difference with the courses I took the first semester because I'm taking a couple of workshops now and the classes are much more interactive and we are actually negotiating and we're taking also an advanced negotiation workshop, another one actually, uh, in which we uh, negotiate among each other for, for real. And I think that's an experience too, because I mean, at least from where I'm from, you don't have that kind of courses. You don't have that kind of classes. You have a lecture, the professor getting in class, explaining all the stuff and then you say goodbye. And you don't have that kind of, uh, at least in Italy, guys, uh, you don't have that kind of experience. And here you get to learn a lot also through this, this kind of classes, these kind of courses, which are, um, of course, on top, I mean, of normal lectures, but, you know, make you learn a lot through negotiation or uh, other kind of, uh, I mean, open discussion with professor. I never thought before coming here that I could really, you know, spend two hours talking with my professor. And that's amazing, I think. I'd say, um... It's one of those things in terms of uh, personal development. I ended up doing a course and working for one of the United Nations Special Rapporteurs whilst I was here, which I, I don't think I ever expected mm -hmm. I'd do. And it wasn't, wasn't in an area that I was particularly familiar with. But it's one of those things, it really does expand not only your knowledge base, but your process of thinking. So I think part of it is, you know, these are, Colombia is a big institution and it, it's well-funded it has standing and with that um, comes you know opportunities that if there's something that interests you you can do that and develop and I, I it's both I think it's something whether or not I stay in that area it's something that's really informed you know opened up quite a few doors with me because through that it brings contacts it brings experience and it brings that other way of thinking that you know maybe if you've been working for a few years or practicing that sometimes you lose sight of that a little bit uh, well I'm doing Quite a lot of stuff, but um, I guess in the end there is there is one Colombia for every single person. You can have completely different experiences yeah, inside sure. here, right? Yeah. So one of the side things that I'm doing is that um, a research a, a research assistant position, not for a professor, but for the library. Um, I'm helping the the library to renew their their collection on Brazilian books. Nice. So like. It's 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 cool, right? It's it's different, and uh, along with like classes that we have, maybe a hundred people, and then another classes that I have six of us, like with an amazing professor. You have these very very different opportunities here, so it's it's been it's been am amazing. I mean, you can you can build a very 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 tailored experience for for yourself, right? And Lucas, I'm gonna call you out because you were actually on the Student Senate, and he's the first ever LLM co-chair of the graduation team. So oh. you want to talk about that a little bit? Okay, yeah, so more different Just things. The student the yeah, so the Student Senate, Senate is like the, the body that um, kind of like take care of student affairs from an internal perspective. And it has been a, a truly amazing experience because you have the opportunity of working together with uh, Columbia Law School and actually make suggestions to improve Columbia Law School in something that we m maybe uh, don't disagree or want to advance in a specific topic. And also having the opportunity of being the, 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 the one of the co-chairs for, for graduation has been amazing. I mean, we, we are organizing events, we are taking people to different things, we we had like when we went to a basketball game. We are organizing parties. We are trying to make like well, we go to parties yeah. here as well, right? Like well, we cannot lie. It's part it's part of our life here. A good part of our life here. Uh, so yeah, you can engage in like several 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 different things um, that that you have you have no idea before before coming here. So it's it's amazing. It's yeah. really nice. Any other fun student organizations or events um, that you're involved with? Um, to people who like performing, I would highly recommend participating in Law Review, which is Columbia Law School's musical. And we perform once each semester. 
it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to make new friends outside of your class. And I got to know a lot of the JDs because I was a part of the law review. And if you generally like dancing or performing, there's a lot going on in all of Columbia University's schools, whether it's undergrad departments or Bernard. And it's a really good way to keep yourself centered, especially given all the activity that's going on around you and keep in touch with your passions and interests outside. I love that. Yeah. One thing I want to mention is that Columbia Law School has a lot of affinity groups. Um, so uh, I'm actually yeah. an Ellen <coughs> rep for uh, Columbia Pulsa, a Haitian Pacific American Student uh, Association. So. Uh, by joining this kind of student organization, you have, a, like, as LM students, you have a lot of opportunity to interact with the JDs. Uh, and also, we organize a lot of uh, events and also lunch panels at the law school. And just a couple of weeks ago, I coordinated and uh, helped organize this uh, firm lunch panel about Asian law for Apulsa. Um, so it's also, I think it's also a great opportunity to be involved uh, in addition to your busy um, Study schedules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also, guys, there are a lot of um, clinics and externship. Like, I mean, I joined uh, a couple of um, uh, organizations too. I'm uh, LLM representative of Columbia Law Women Association. But besides that, I just uh, I'm going to start um, a clinic about um, let's say um, residential housing. So, I mean, there are also these kind of experience externship clinics where, and also you can satisfy the pro bono requirements uh, through. Uh, this program so guys just take a look at everything join organization uh, if you find the time do a clinic on externship there's a lot a lot offered and you have to you know try to take the most of it there's also New York which is just like a yeah. giant yeah. place yeah. 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 let's jump on the fun part it's like Unlimited. It's yeah. it's, 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 it's like, like a black hole. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like, like black hole. Yeah. anything else. You know, I think there's there are lots of you know there's there's Columbia's obviously got loads of societies and loads of organizations. Pretty much anything that you want to do, but so does New York. Yeah. Um, and you know they have in the summers especially they have loads of outdoor events all the time. Um, you know even if you don't particularly want to go to an event, Central Park is I don't know a kilometer mm -hmm. away just to go for a run or yeah, a walk. Absolutely. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a vibrant city. Um, I think that's been one of the best parts and probably one of the parts before coming, I wasn't that bothered in. I thought, oh, I just, you know, I want to come back. I want to study. I want to focus on that. But, you know, being in New York, it's, it is, it's it kind of, it's kind of cliche to say everyone says it's magical, but it, yeah. it is. Yeah. 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 And not, not to mention the, the perks of being a student in New yeah. York. Yeah. I mean, with your Columbia card, you can get uh, <laughs> free, uh, free access, as, uh, all access to like all museums. almost yeah. all museums. Which is amazing because, yeah. I mean, uh, you are walking, I don't know, in 53rd Street and you see MoMA and you said, okay, I will go yeah. and enter just because I can. And yeah. this is and the mess it takes, requires maybe more than one week. So yeah. 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 Many yeah. times as we want. Yes. So. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. good. That's a good part of it. As there well. are like so many different versions of these bucket lists of must sees in New York, but yeah. I just feel like yeah. we don't have that much time to go like, and check also, out these yeah, places. And yeah, and also you just walk around, I mean, downtown into Lovard, you just get into that art gallery and that one. And I mean, you don't even need to go to a museum. There are yeah. so many art galleries and, you know, like, I don't know, concept stores and yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. You just get in and you get fascinated by the city. And food. And food, yeah. food. Yeah. of course, yeah. like, yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. We have food a lot of well, we have a lot of good food actually inside Colombia and outside oh, Colombia. Yeah. Doing all these lunch talks, uh, normally food is provided, so you have normally <laughs> guaranteed lunch for pretty much your whole stay here. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. that's a good thing to keep in yeah, mind. Money is something you're gonna start thinking about. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it helps, it so, helps yeah. save yeah. money. Free lunch, so yeah. Start following yeah. CLS munchies yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. on Instagram. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, also, I think what really struck me is how truly New York exemplifies global culture. Mm. Two weeks ago, I went and ate, uh, I went to East Village with a friend and I literally ate my way through East Village. I planned an entire day off and I started in Greenwich, saw NYU's campus. I got falafel in one of the most famous falafel spots. I got artichoke pizza. Then I went to East Village. Uh, there's just so much to learn about different parts of the world just by being in one city and I feel like that opportunity is unparalleled to really get to know people from different cultures understand their cultures and get to make lifelong friends and just 
experience the energy. The wife is just, it's really, there's no, there's no comparison. And I think, I think that like you could spend your entire life just exploring New York and not be done. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk a little bit about sort of the interview in the university at large? Are you taking a class at some other schools? Are you getting involved with students in other, in other programs, things like that? Um, yeah, so Columbia Law School uh, allows like cross registration. So there are like a, a specific list of courses that you can take at other schools. But even if you want courses outside that list, go for it, talk to the professor, <laughs> maybe, and then come to talk to people from uh, GLS. Maybe they will authorize you to take uh, those courses. It happened with me, it worked pretty well. Um, I was taking courses at SIPA, which is the School of International and Public Affairs. And it was a great experience, super nice, I truly recommend it. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm taking uh, a language course because I was here and I've been, I studied French when I was uh, little at middle school mm -hmm. and I, I thought, I mean, that I could take the chance here since so we can cross this visa with other, with all, well, not only with NYU and the business school, but also Columbia University in general. So I'm taking a French course and I'm brush it up and I'm super happy about that also. I mean, more work, but as long as you're keen on doing that, yeah. you I, have to. I, I was going to say one of the other things is uh, with some of the classes that you do, you also have people who cross register into your law classes from other schools mm -hmm. and uh, other schools within Columbia and from other schools from from like NYU. And actually, it's really interesting because you get people, you know, people here are really bright and they have really different, interesting perspectives. You get debates, you get arguments on occasion, but mm -hmm. it, it, it's only a good thing. And yeah, again, it goes to the expanding those perspectives and those horizons. Can you talk a little bit about the network of people that you meet here, um, that maybe the alumni network that you're anticipating once you graduate, and sort of what that looks like um, um, for you? I think, I think as soon as you decide, and I, actually as soon as you get admitted, you feel like you're a part of the community. If you've already made the decision that you're coming here, then you all are, you already are a part of the community. For me, I knew that this was one of my top choices. And as soon as I got my admission email, I reached out to somebody who was here three years ago and she responded really promptly. I had a really long chat with her. She was she answered all of these questions on a very long phone call, transatlantic phone call. But uh, the network is phenomenal. You can just reach out to every everybody under the sun saying that you're studying here and they'll be willing to listen to you and help you out and give you advice, whether it's about how to tailor classes. I was actually confused about whether I should take corporations this semester or not. I remember I had a conversation with Jill about it. I wrote to two partners in two law firms who I had just met last semester. And I said, can you please help me figure out if this course is relevant? And people are always happy to help despite, despite very busy schedules. And I think that's an opportunity that everybody should make the most of because these are connections that will stay with you really lifelong. And the legal community is a lot smaller than we think it is. And it's mm -hmm. always helpful to have uh, people you can count on for support and, and pay it forward when the time comes for other people. Yeah, and also I feel like this year is a good opportunity for you to meet people from other parts of the world. We have such a big class. Of course, it's impossible to get to know everyone, but like throughout like the first semester, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. I have a magic. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So we still like get get to know like meet new Each people other. like yeah. in the second semester, but still like you feel like oh you have. Sort but that's of, the coolest thing, right? Yeah. After yeah. six exactly. months with the last together, you're like oh, that's <laughs> weird. No, no, no. We haven't met. Yeah, but somehow you just started to sort of develop a relationship with um, a friendship with um, people with different back, uh, cultural backgrounds. And actually, that's um, also one part of it that I really enjoy because mm -hmm. you're here to live abroad for a year and also to explore, uh, experience different culture and, um, ex and also explore part of you mm. as well. Yeah. There's one side of it as well, which I, I didn't expect. So when you speak to, at the end of class, you know, sometimes you'll end up in a conversation. And if you speak to someone or you speak to a professor and they're like, oh, you must meet my friend 
so and so who just so <laughs> happens to be the ambassador for at large for war crimes and you're like oh okay sure <laughs> and, you know you think oh that's that's just an empty promise and then you find yourself two weeks later having lunch with but these people <laughs> yeah, yeah because this is this this is you know it's that kind of it's that kind of environment where you know you expand and everyone yeah, they, people are there to help each other out in that way, and th those are resources and net that, networks that probably yeah you, you wouldn't be able to get at other places, especially in New York because that's where so many of these people are located. Great. If you had to use one word to describe your LLM year so far, or one sentence, what would it be? Hmm. Rewarding. Okay. Yeah. Um, for me, it would be unique. Because, I mean, unique is a word that doesn't have a connotation, right? Doesn't have a <laughs> positive connotation, doesn't have a negative connotation. It, to me, Colombia is, and the other land is unique. It's something you're going to have once in a lifetime. And it's not going to come back. You will never, you, you, you will not be able to repeat this experience. And it's, it's unique in all its, you know, all its nuances. Uh, sometimes you study too much, sometimes you study until 3 a.m. at night, sometimes you party until 3 a.m. at night, sometimes you have to wake up very early to finish yeah. your readings or whatever because the night before you stopped studying and you decided to, to join a dinner of your friend, with your friends, you know. I mean, but it's something unique. You will never be able to go, I don't know, out yeah. for dinner with 30 yeah. people 30, 30 different, different yeah. nationalities, I mean, like yeah. from all over the world. You will yeah. never be able to go to Mexico with other 60 people. You yeah. It's something unique and it's going gonna, it's gonna to leave a mark on your life, absolutely, yeah. for me. Yeah. Mine is a hyphenated word, which is student-centric. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I, I, I'm really amazed by the resources this law school could offer. And also, not only, I feel like the law school, I went to like, uh, the uh, Office of Career Services so many times, like they provide <laughs> you with mock interviews and they help you, you know, with the job fair, whatever, like, and also like the whole university has a lot of resources, you know, if you ever feel, I'm a little bit stressed, you know, like the midterm or like the finals are just approaching, you know, I, I feel, um, I don't know what to do with my schedule or if you have any kind of problem, you can also seek help from not only the law school, but also the entire university. So that's really what I enjoy and what, what I feel um, like this is such a right decision for me to come to this school. <laughs> I'd say it's similar to yours. Mine's probably eye-opening um, <laughs> in, in all the, like, the best possible ways, but also in like, some of the ways that you, know, you can really grapple with those things. Where you learn something about yourself. You learn, you know, you learn different, different things. You, you really have to question you know, what you want to do and, that, and that's maybe part of the reason why people would come and do an LLM after a couple of years of working or, or doing something else. I think, you know, you have the time and the space in order to do that here. Um, yeah, I've learned a lot about myself. Yeah, I would picture it as challenging in the way that it will be everything that you are expecting and a little bit more. So it will <laughs> definitely take you out of your comfort zone mm. oh, and yeah. that it will make you be a better version of yourself at the end of, of everything. Beautiful. And if you were in the student's shoes right now, mm. um, you know, trying to make this decision, we all know that you all were admitted to more than one place. How, what, what advice would you give them when they're, they're contemplating these decisions? These are hard decisions, and I always say, ask the hard questions. So what are the hard questions that they should be asking themselves, asking the school, and thinking about right now, and what would you advise them to be thinking about as they're contemplating where to go to school, other than that they should come to Columbia, of course. <laughs> um, I think it helps to understand why you want to do an LLM in the first place, and whether you see it as a segue into studying further, or having new experiences, or uh, creating a new career path for yourself. And I feel like all of those factors should uh, it, it helps to consider all those factors when you're deciding where to go. For me, the decision was a very simple one. I love corporate law. New York is the center of the business world. Uh, I wanted to live in New York City since I was a little girl. So for me, it was like a dream come true. It was a fairly easy decision. But I would uh, advise everybody to think about uh, what you think a particular university has to offer in terms of your areas of interest. Though I assure you, if you want it, Columbia has it. Uh, I think that helps and just having some idea about what you see this LLM as 
leading into has helped me decide. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I was still I still remember that I was deciding like last year pretty much at this time I was deciding between Columbia and another school uh, on the West Coast. So, but for me, like I also talked to a lot of friends who told me that I should go to Columbia. Um, I think because Columbia has a larger LM program, which means that you know like a lot of the resources are readily available to students and that like the whole program is really well organized. So I think those kind of considerations you should also like think about before you make the decision. Also like New York City is a big factor yeah. for me. Yeah. I'd say three things. Uh, the first is I don't know if those mind the, the mind maps and the questions that you're advised to do are still sent out. Um, so uh, I normally wouldn't do that kind of thing, but I did. And uh, it turned into keeping a journal from beforehand. Um, and it was really helpful to see kind of that progression of your thoughts and your feelings and, and how you react to it. That would be the first thing. The second thing is reach out to people who are doing their LLM or who have done it previously, especially in your area of interest or expertise, because they'll be able to tell you about courses that you should do and courses you should think about, because it's really hard to know what to do. And it feels like such a big decision because you, you don't have that much time or that much availability. Um, and the third thing is uh, read uh, read a little bit before coming out here. There, were, For example, my background in the UK was doing lots of criminal cases. And I read a book by a professor here, American Criminal Justice, and it kind of it opened up it opened up ideas that led to course selections. And then I became very close with that professor last year. Um, and we have really interesting discussions as a result of that. So yeah, I don't think, don't be afraid to do any of those things. Well, um, for me, well, I still think, remember um, when I was deciding about among different schools, and I think you have to feature yourself. You have to feature yourself in a few months uh, from now and think seriously where you want to, where you see yourself. And I mean, because, uh, you know, there are different considerations we had to take into account last year and also money because it's, it's a, uh, it's a fact, I mean, something that you have to think about. And last year, I I thought, what, what I, would, I would tell you guys is really, no, don't think, it's not about money, it's not about, uh, your, your decision cannot be driven by this, it must be driven by where really, where you picture yourself in a few months or in one year from now. And I closed my eyes and I thought that I've always dreamt of Colombia and I couldn't go anywhere else. Anywhere else, so this why you know the money. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. yeah. 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 I mean, like the island for me was in my life to do list. So yeah. when it arrived, yeah. when Columbia yeah. admission arrived, which was the last one actually, I was dying before. Oh, I, was, wow. I was not coming. I was like, I gotta, I gotta meet it. But the others was like, oh my god, it's not coming. It's not gonna happen. Maybe it doesn't have to happen. But when I when I arrived. I, I really did. I, I stopped thinking about everything else, like money and this and New York City and the you know East Coast versus West Coast. Picture yourself, and if it, here's the place where you see yourself, just choose it. And everything's gonna it's gonna be okay. Everything is gonna come along. You it's gonna be a mess. You're gonna receive tons of emails. Tons. I was scared when I re <laughs> received the emails from GLS every time, or from Jill, from Madison, because there's a lot. You have to be you know to have your mind on tons of things and to you know think about everything take care of moving to new york city find a place where to stay find the money find everything but guys everything's gonna be okay you, you're gonna be perfectly fit in this you know in this amazing behavior challenging stimulating and yeah come to colombia <laughs> Yeah, I would say that you're, you ne you have to keep in mind that your LLM year, it's not only about the school, it's not only about the city, it's not only about the money, and it's not only about what you're doing next. The idea is putting everything together and finding what is the right balance for you. And in my personal opinion, I guess that Colombia has a very good balance between uh, what you can do after, the reputation of the school, what sure. they offer here, and New York City. So, as my my colleagues uh, advise, like picture yourself in one of the schools. Do your research. Go on like Google Google Street View. Take a look at the school <laughs> if you haven't checked yet. That no, that's important. Take do, take yeah. see yeah. pictures of the, yeah, the place. I, I uh, it's important to see if you want to be in that yeah. in that place. 
and consider everything together and then and then make your your decision it's not about one thing it's about the whole experience alan do you have any questions no okay any we're almost done with time any final thoughts before we we sign off any last i wish i were you <laughs> I wish I could send back again my LLM. Really. One, yeah, I, I mean, I was just talking with Jake, you know, like we can't believe time flew by just so yeah. fast. We're talking about graduation right now. So it's just one year is pretty fast. So it's kind of flying. Yeah, just hope everyone could enjoy this yeah. year. It's going to be a phenomenal experience and you'll be richer for it. It's great. Yeah, I would do it again. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Take the most of it. Yeah. Take the most of it. Absolutely. Do something new as well. Take up something new yeah. that you otherwise wouldn't. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I'm gonna step back on really quickly. I don't know if you can Austin. Come back to yeah. 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 My, my, my fabulous students, I say thank you to all of you. Um, and thank you to everyone who joined us. Um, this has been really phenomenal. Um, and I hope we answered a lot of your questions. Um, as you can see, our students are really engaged and wonderful, and there is a list of students who volunteered to be contacted by all of you on our admitted student website. So I encourage you to reach out to them. Um, like um, everyone here said, they were really helpful to, the prior students were helpful to them when they were making their decisions. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and with that, we'll sign off. Have a wonderful evening, morning, day, whatever time it is where you are. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 <laughs>